Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, and welcome to day 27 of the 2017-2018 NBA season. Let's just get right into all the news and highlights from yesterday. Lego Isaiah Thomas could be lacing up for the Cleveland Cavaliers much sooner than we all expected. The Cavs said that they expect IT to return by January 1st. A reporter who was watching Isaiah Thomas practice with the Cavs said he doesn't even think it'll take that long for Isaiah Thomas to come back. I watched IT work out Sunday before the Hawks game. Full lather, good 30 to 40 minutes sprinting up and down the court dribbling drills three pointers all over the arc there's no way that's going to take seven more weeks that's great news but then again it is just coming from a reporter so we do have to take it with a grain of salt what we might not have to take with a grain of salt though is the fact that Isaiah Thomas said himself that now is just a matter of getting back into shape before he can play for Cleveland, meaning that his hip is fully recovered. He just wasn't able to do a whole lot of basketball activities like full sprints up and down the court for the past few months. So right now is basically his training camp offseason whatever you want to call it now personally i didn't expect isaiah thomas to come back till like the february mark around the all-star break time of year so hearing that january 1st which only like a month and a half away and that seems like it's at the latest and it sounds like he could be back much sooner than that that's exciting news and i'm sure any cast fans watching this are ecstatic right now because finally something good for you guys i mean you there hasn't been much good so far this season for the cleveland cavaliers joel Embiid versus lonzo ball well lonzo ball really hasn't done or said anything to joel Embiid because lavar ball has always been the one to do the talking for lonzo ball however we all know that joel Embiid has already taken his fair share of shots at lonzo from telling ben simmons to dunk on him on draft night to mocking his jumper during warm-ups just a couple of weeks ago and this could lead some people to feel like Embiid just doesn't care too much for Lonzo, but it's actually just the opposite of that. And B said yesterday that he actually likes Lonzo Ball. I love Lonzo. The whole situation with them, it I think is just fun. I love what he's doing, especially with his own shoe. He's staking his own place. People think I hate him, but I love him. As much as this could have been just sarcasm from Joel Embiid, I don't think he hates Lonzo Ball at all. I don't think you guys should think that he hates Lonzo Ball at all. Most of these NBA rivalries, there's really not that much to them. Most of it is just for fun. Players like to trash talk on the court. That's part of the game. Some players enjoy that, and that's what they do. It's kind of like when you and your friends are playing 2K together. I mean, you guys trash talk a lot, sometimes feeling get hurt, but at the end of the day, you're still cool. Cool. That's how it is with these players. They have said time and time again that the NBA is like a brotherhood to them. It's very rare that players genuinely just dislike one another. Unless, of course, you are Joakim Noah. He genuinely hates LeBron James. Fun fact of the week time brought to you guys by NBA Amino Hardwood. Did you guys know that Andre Drummond has the same number of 20 rebound games as Shaq, the big diesel? did himself already. Shaq has had 35 in 19 seasons while Drummond has already reached the same 35 in only 6 seasons. As a Pistons fan, this brought a huge smile to my face. For more fun facts, trivia, and general NBA discussion with other users, be sure to download the Hardwood Amino app. Link in the description box below. Let's get into the highlights. This time for sure, the win streak ends tonight at 11. They rallied and beat the Hornets last time when Kyrie Irving went down in the first quarter, but not this time. They're going up against the Toronto Raptors, one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. The, no way they get their 12th straight win that's what i was thinking before the game last night but then somehow the celtics still managed to pull out the win last night 95 to 94 it was a close one demar rosen had a chance to get the raptors the lead and most likely the win with around two seconds left on a shot that he normally makes but it just didn't fall this time. Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier, Marcus Smart all did their parts. All did really good jobs to the Celtics. Al Horford returned from his concussion and dropped 21 points. And Jason Tatum hit a tough drive late in the fourth to kind of keep the Raptors at bay, even though he hadn't been having the best night shooting the ball prior to that. And that also prompted his teammate Jalen Brown to kind of say that Tatum has the clutch gene after the game. With him, though, did you have any idea? He was capable of this, doing these things in the clutch on the stage. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I think that's where, like, that's where Jason comes alive. I think a lot of the team, a lot of the players on this team come alive in that fourth quarter, and Jason's one of them. Like, when, it, when the game is on the line, it's when we, we perform the best, and, and Jason's one of those type players that if you give him the ball in the clutch, he can make something happen, hit a tough shot. He's in the summer league. He was making shots like that, you know. Uh, just, he's beyond his years, and 
He's gonna continue to get better. It's too early to tell whether or not Jason Tatum really has the clutch gene or not, but I wouldn't doubt it. He just has that unfazed aura to him. No matter what the score or situation, he doesn't play any differently, which is really good, especially for a rookie. And to be honest here, he doesn't even need to be clutch once Irving returns. If the Celtics are ever in need of a big bucket, we all know exactly where the ball is going and who is taking the big shot. This Celtics team though, is just something else. I really think if they had Gordon Hayward, that they would have a legit shot at making the finals this year. And even without Gordon Hayward, Cleveland won't have an easy time beating them. And come next year, this team could be serious contenders. Speaking of contenders though, the Houston Rockets, I feel like most people don't take them too seriously. I feel like they're given that stigma of being a really good regular season team, but when it comes down to it in the playoffs, they make the conference finals or something, and that's when people start to doubt whether or not they can go any further. I don't know though. I think they have just as good of a shot as any other contenders that aren't named the Golden State Warriors of winning at all. Eric Gordon has been playing better so far this year. Clint Capella has improved and James Harden is still James Harden and we are yet to see what kind of impact Chris Paul is going to have on this team. The firepower for sure is there. Now it's just a matter of can they keep it up? If James Harden and Chris Paul can play like James Harden and Chris Paul in the postseason. I hope they can, I really do, and if they do, then they can go very far. That being said, the Houston Rockets won again yesterday, 118 to 95. James Harden, after being on fire the past three games, cooled off a bit shooting the ball, but still had 26 points and 15 assists. And as much as people want to see Giannis win MVP, I feel like it's going to be James Harden this year. After barely missing out on it for the past two years, he does kind of deserve this one. And if he doesn't get it this year, then he never will because if Giannis doesn't get it this year, then he is for sure getting it the next and probably a few more times after that as well. The Houston Rockets are now 11-3 on the year, and I just want to see what Chris Paul is going to add to this team already. Dennis Smith Jr. got to look into the future of what he could become last night. I see a lot of Westbrook in DSJ. They even kind of look a bit similar if you ask me. Carmelo was out last night for the Thunder with a sore lower back, but against the Mavericks, they really didn't need him anyways. Paul George and Russell Westbrook were more than enough to get the 112-99 win over Dallas. PG-13 pretty much picked up right where he left off in the Thunder's last game against the Clippers as he looked like the Paul George that the Pacers had towards the end of last season when he was dropping 30-point game after 30-point game. Just playing unreal basketball. 37 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists for him last night, and Russell Westbrook had 27 points while getting to the free throw line 13 times and i even think dennis Smith jr looks up to russ a bit and studies the game of westbrook too because he said after the game that he just doesn't understand how westbrook keeps getting to the free throw line so many times how was it going against westbrook for your first time in your career can you just talk about that experience uh it was a good matchup good matchup Keith? yeah any any what would you say that you didn't know he did he was doing on the court from watching him as in playing him now what was the difference uh, i didn't know he got him many calls I know he got a many calls. No, he's, he's a really good player, though. DSJ will for sure be one of those players that gets a lot of calls in a few years. Rookies typically just don't get a lot of calls in the first place, so that's why he's not getting them right now. But if he keeps playing as aggressive as he's been playing, then yeah, he'll spend a lot of time at the foul line and I'm just kind of glad that Russ is starting to make his free throws again. The Pistons finish off their five game homestand with yet another win, 112 to 103 over the Miami Heat and they are now 10 and three on the year. Avery Bradley and Tobias Harris were both great for Detroit last night and Whiteside was great for Miami but the player of the game for me has to go to Luke Kennard. With Stanley Johnson being out, Kennard has been able to get some more meaningful minutes and it paid off big time for Detroit last night as he did only have 14 points, but his play down the stretch was just incredible. He kept hitting big shots after big shot and actually played some pretty good defense as well. Had a huge block on Goran Dragic as well as stopped Hassan Whiteside from scoring right at the rim down the stretch. His style of play really just reminds me of a James Harden, Manu Ginobili style of play. He has that craftiness to him and is a really good passer as well. He's going to be great in a couple of years. But that wraps up all the action from yesterday. You guys can go vote for the player of the day by following the link down in the description box below. Just remember the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day. And yesterday, you guys selected DeMarcus Cousins and has 35 points, 15 rebounds, and five assists 
as your player of the day. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below, as well as like and subscribe for more daily NBA news and highlights. But until tomorrow, keep getting the buckets, Team SDC, and I'm out of here. Peace.